Hey guys, so this week we have a video for you installing DVWA on Windows 10. I uh, get a lot of uh, newcomers asking how to install DVWA on different operating systems on the uh, GitHub, uh, official DVWA GitHub repository. Uh, DigiNinja has been doing a great job, uh, Robin Wood, uh, of helping these newcomers uh, getting, getting DVWA installed and, and helping them troubleshoot. Uh, hopefully in the future, can, if he has any, any newcomers like this, he can point them towards this video uh, and that can uh, free up some of his, of his own time. Uh, so in this video we'll be using uh, XAMPP to install DVWA on Windows 10. You could, there are other ways you can install uh, DVWA on, win, on Windows such as installing Apache, uh, PHP and MySQL manually. Uh, but this time we'll be using uh, XAMPP because it's just easier for, for newcomers to, to, to install it. It's point and click interface uh, and it's just really easy to do. Uh, next week we may be doing a video on installing DVWA on Kali Linux. Uh, so I'll keep your eye out for that. Uh, we also have a new addition to the office, uh, which is here. It's a new Synology uh, disk station, uh, NAS, uh, which I may be doing a review on um, if there's enough interest. So leave a comment below if, if that might uh, be of interest to you. So now I'm going to jump into the video and show you how to install DVWA on Windows 10. So here we have uh, Windows 10. And we'll just open up uh, Microsoft Edge here. And it decides to load. And then we'll go to the dvwa.co.uk uh, main website. As you can see, this is the main website. We're going to click on the GitHub uh, link here on the top right hand corner. And here we have the official GitHub repository. As you can see down here in the readme, there's um, some important information such as warnings, uh, download information uh, and installation instructions and some other troubleshooting information at the bottom there. Okay, so to install DVWA on Windows, there are several different ways to do this, but we're going to be using a software package called XAMPP, uh, which will install um, Apache, MySQL, and PHP for us. Now, they do PHP 5.6 versions as well as 7.1. We want the 7.1 um, version. So make sure you download the correct installation binary from the downloads page you see here they have exam for different distributions as well And we're just going to save that to the desktop and let that download. Once downloaded, we'll run it. Just click yes on this. Okay, on that, it's just one is about the Windows UAC. And now we'll go through the installation process. Now we don't want, all we want really is Apache, MySQL and PHP. So we can un untick the rest of them, such as Perl, PHP, my admin. They're not necessary, so we'll, we'll untick those. As you can see, it's installing in the uh, CXAMP folder. Now it's just extracting all the needed files. OK, 
Okay, so this is a Windows firewall is asking us to allow uh, Apache through. Um, so we'll just allow it for the local host. Choose the language for XAMPP. This is the XAMPP control panel, so we're going to start Apache. Now start the running. Now start to run the web server. And we'll also start uh, MySQL. So let's go to the local host and just double check that the web server is actually running. So let's type local host in the address bar. We could just type 127.0.0.1 here as well. And as you can see, we have a web page displaying, so the web server is running. Okay, we have another Windows firewall ask, rule here asking us just to allow that. Um, we'll allow it for the local host. Okay, so now we're going to go to the uh, main, uh, the root directory of the web server. So it's in C, XAMPP, and htdocs. And these are the default files that XAMPP comes with. So we can go ahead and delete those because we don't need them. And what we're going to want to do, um, we'll just double check that those files are gone. As you can see here, we get a uh, directory listing and it also gives us some handy information about what our environment setup is like. So we're gonna to need to download the DVWA uh, source code. So if we go to dvwa.co.uk, click the download button here, which will download the very latest uh, master version of, of DVWA. So we'll just save that to the desktop. Once that's downloaded, we'll extract the, the zip. Again, just to the desktop. As you can see, all the files are here. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy them across to the web server root directory, which is cxamp uh, htdocs. So let's copy these across. Actually, first we'll create a dvwa folder in there, or lowercase. And then we'll copy these into the dvwa folder. Okay, now those files are in the DVWA folder. We'll just double check that they're showing. Uh, so we'll go back to local host and we'll see the DVWA folder is there. And now we can see we get a error here telling us that the configuration file uh, needs to be renamed. So it's in the config directory of the DVWA folder, which we just created. And this is the main DVWA configuration file, which keeps um, username and passwords for MySQL and, and that kind of thing. So it's a very important file. So we'll just rename it, take the .dist off the end. So we'll load DVWA again, and we can see the error is now gone. And we can access uh, the DVWA setup page. So what we're going to do is we're going to need to create the DVWA um, MySQL database so that it can run here. It's confirming lots of different information about our, our environment and it's showing us that things are working and things that aren't working such as allow URL includes. So 
click on this button here to set up the database and as you can see it has failed because PHP can't connect to MySQL. So that is probably due to um, the wrong username and password being configured in the configuration file so we're just going to have a look in there. Now we'll open it with Notepad. And we're going to change the default password. And I believe for example, it's just blank. So we'll leave that blank. We'll save that. And then we'll create the database again. And as you can see, everything seems to be working this time. The default username and password for DVWA is admin password. So if we just put those in, log in. And as you can see, everything's now set up. DVWA is ready to use. What we'll do is we'll just double check the configuration to make sure that everything is working correctly. As you can see here, we have the username we're logged into the security level and if PHP IDS is enabled. Some instructions there, which are in the readme. And here's the setup page. As we can see, allow URL include isn't enabled. So we're going to enable that in the PHP configuration file. So we'll just search here for the correct directive. And then we're going to change this from off to on. And this helps us exploit vulnerabilities such as file inclusion vulnerabilities. Turn that on and save the file. And that's all there is to it. Everything's set up. Actually, so we need to restart uh, Apache. So the configuration changes are implemented. So we've stopped it, start it again. Okay, see, now we'll refresh the page and then that should be enabled. So that's great. So we're all set up now and ready to go. Check it.